This video is sponsored by the Mashup XAKG M220 Pro headphones. Fortnite has been changing so much that it's hard to keep up with the meta. In this video, I'll be showing you how to play every time to get a ton of kills and win at the same time with the latest up-to-date tips available, like how to use rifts and ATKs aggressively, and I'm also doing a 2800 V-Bucks giveaway. To enter, you just have to like, comment, and subscribe for a chance to win 2800 V-Bucks. Let's go ahead and start the video. If you want to get a lot of kills, then it's real important that you land first before everyone else so that you get to pick the landing spot and get the weapon while they're just starting to get loot. If you look here, I actually went lower and deployed before like five different people that went to the water, which is actually the lowest point that you could go. But what a lot of people don't know is that it uses the same deploying height as the lowest ground, which is actually the road that I deployed on top of. And the reason I went lower and deployed first was because it took me less time to move to the road than to the water. And like I said, you get to pick where you go, get the first weapon, and you get to instantly kill that noob that tries to get your weapon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drink this big shield potion right away instead of waiting for minis because I landed in a, a popular place so someone might just pop up and kill me if I don't use it right away. And just like this guy, he's gonna climb up so I prepare to beat him at the highest point and make sure to use the natural cover like the top of the roof and also being on the right side is huge because your crosshair is on the right side. That let me get the kill without being touched even once. And the next kill is also a really good example. Someone catches me off guard, but I got this bush here, so I'm just gonna hide behind it and peek out the right side. And I also made sure to aim down sight when I peek to the right side, because like I said, the right side has a huge advantage. Even if you're aiming down, you're gonna be able to see the enemy before they even see you and pop that shot off real quickly and just hide back into cover again. Now that there's no one around me, I make sure to loot up because I don't wanna be chasing for kills right away since I don't have any real loot and if I run to enemies that keep looting I'm gonna lose for sure. I found this scoped AR here and I'm gonna actually pick it over the AR. Usually the scoped AR does less damage and it shoots slower than the normal AR but even then the gray AR is really really bad because of the huge bloom that it has. It's really inaccurate so instead I just opt for the scoped rifle even though it barely does damage. Now that I finished looting I'm gonna go ahead and go to the highest place to scope around because a lot of people landed here and I can pretty much assume that everything has been looted so there's not much point trying to go around to get loot. It's a good idea to take advantage of my good position already. So go up here I spot someone. I don't shoot them yet though because when you spot someone that doesn't see you and you have a sniper you want to take your time and get the first shot right because that's when the battle starts and they're gonna start building. So what I like to do with the sniper is I wait for them to jump. Because when they jump, they usually go in a straight direction and you can predict where they fall and then shoot it at that point. And also be good with the sniper because I suck so I miss. If I was a better sniper, I would have hit that every single time. But since it didn't work switching to scope AR, I hit them a few times so I'm gonna go ahead and push them. When you're pushing people on the ground, don't just run straight up to them because they can peek and shoot you at any time with like a shotgun or an AR and just burst you from 100 to 0. So always go behind your ramps you can go up three times and you're gonna be fine because that's you're not gonna take fall damage from that height so i find them and i just go ahead and fall down while shooting them normally i wouldn't drop down that quickly but i knew that they were really low because i shot them a bunch of times when they had no shield so i did that to secure the kill instead of them being able to run away so now i'm gonna go ahead and drink up this shield whoa 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 pass omnipi you freaking noob what are you doing man you didn't check around for mini shields. Ugh. Uh, right after the shield potion, I look around and I see this mini shield. So I could be rocking 175 health right now. But I'm going around with like a 150. Which could kill me if someone just was around the corner with like a pump. And they get a really good shot off. So make sure to check for minis before you drink that shield potion. And this is a perfect example of why the scoped AR is way better than the gray AR. If I didn't have the scoped AR here and the gray AR instead, I would make miss probably every single shot from this range and I love landing at lazy links when I'm going for high kills because a lot of people land here there's a lot of materials around and after you finish killing everyone there's an ATK so when you see this guy running away here you can just hop into your ATK and just chase right after them 
And for some reason, he stops over here and he does nothing. And, uh, super pro tip, guys. Don't use a pump shotgun at, like, more than 10 meters away. It's just not gonna work. So there it is. We just dominated Lazy Lynx. And now here comes the boring part. Make sure you have enough materials to win the next fight. Because after this is gonna be the mid game. Where more good players will pop up. Because they actually survived their initial town or landing or whatever. And they have more materials. So you have to make sure you have enough too. A good amount that I feel comfortable with is around 400 total. So I went ahead and got that much. And then now I'm gonna start driving to to the east side which is gonna have a rift and i really prefer traveling by rift over the atk because the atk makes so much sound that people can hear you coming a mile away and it makes it a lot harder to get the kill and surprise people and it's also really nice because this place has these uh curvy trees which gives you the best wood in the game other than the planks the planks give the best but these out of all the trees give the best so i chopped them down and i also chopped down the stone head because they also give a lot of materials and that's the key in this game materials so we're gonna go ahead and use the rift to look around and when you're looking for kills while you're using the rift the secret is to look around really quickly at the open area because people can't really go in and out of it really quickly but look closely at towns because there could be people looting around running between buildings so when you're passing a town look at it for like three to five seconds you might be able to find someone just looting around which is pretty much exactly what happens here i'm looking at tomato town for like a solid three four to five seconds and i see this guy pop up behind a wall hitting a rock and I go in for the kill. And of course, you want to start off with the sniper if the enemy doesn't see you, which he did here. So I get a really sni nice snipe off. Almost finish him off, but there's actually a guy in front of me, which is really annoying. So I have to fight him. But the problem was he knew how to build really well. He knew how to build uh, ceiling into pyramids, which is pretty much impossible to shoot through. So when the enemy does that, you want to drop down to about their level and then shoot the wall because they can't build pyramids outside of the wall. And if they build a ramp to hide behind, you could always go to the side, which is what I'm trying to do here. I see the ramp here. So I try to go around the left side, but it didn't let me build there. So I went around to the right side and shoot it down. And right here, he can't build a ramp towards this side. So he's kind of stuck having to fight me and i managed to get through and shoot him finish him off so that's pretty much the trick to dealing with people who know how to use ceiling and pyramid other than explosives of course but i didn't have explosives at this time and it looks like the other guy that i almost finished uh i just i needed like two more shots so now we don't have any rifts we don't have any atks so the next best thing to do would be to run to high ground and then look around because you get to see way more from above than if you were on the ground so I went up, checked Tomato Town, and looked over to the west, and I see some guy running around. Apparently he saw me too, so he just started building even though I didn't shoot him. I was trying to wait until I get a good shot like I normally do. But sometimes it backfires and the enemy suddenly sees you. So I'm going to go ahead and push him here. Again, you don't want to push on the ground, you know. And since I have a lot more materials than before, I go for the triple layer, which you just have to get used to, to do. But it's really good if you get used to it because they have to shoot down at least two structures to get you out of it. So I highly recommend practicing this build if you haven't already. And here it is and we got high ground so all we gotta do is whip out our drum gun and shoot him a bunch of times pretty much guaranteed kill whenever you do that but i gotta say he was good low ground warrior he actually did almost 100 damage to me so since i got low i don't want to get into another fight right away so instead of checking around me i go ahead and heal up first but a lot of people mess up here because after they finish healing without checking around the surroundings they would just like head to the next place because they think oh i just won so i'm good now but usually that's when you got to be the most careful because people heard that whole fight like we were shooting for over five seconds so what you gotta do is build up after you finish healing up and then look around the area because if no one's pushed you yet then you're good to move on to the next area but uh, there's a good chance that someone pushes you like right over here and then you can catch them so i go up high and then i started fighting but the enemy actually just ran away and i really didn't want to chase them into the tunnel so i just kind of left it there it's a really bad fight to take right here as i'm going to the other side though i actually hear him inside the tunnel so i try to be very quiet here because i'm above him so 
It's not, so it wouldn't be weird for him to think that I ran far away already since I'm not making any sounds and I'm the one with high ground. So for all he know, I could have ran away like five seconds ago. So I'm just going around being really quiet here. He didn't bite the bait though. So I went in hoping that he would be like in the front of the tunnel. He wasn't there. So I legit just ran away for like three seconds and then I head back because he might think that I'm just running away on low ground, which would be a good time to pop out and just peek at me. So after that, I'd run straight back and then there he is. Just right in the open, I finish him off. So if there's an enemy hiding in place that's hard to push, then you just gotta use some little mind games to get him out of there. And like I always say, it's always the most dangerous right after a fight. Some sniper heard us and they're sniping at me. So we go ahead and go out, take another fight. When I'm walking though, I make sure I'm behind cover. There's no cover right away. So I build a stair and then I go into this natural cover and then the fight starts. I get a really snipe shot off on him. So now he's super careful. So I don't bother trying to snipe again since he's not gonna peek. He's right now trying his best to just block me and heal up. So I gotta be the aggressor. I gotta keep pushing. And when I push close enough, I, again, I go for high ground and then I just shoot down the walls. Then we get into a huge build fight, but I already have such high ground that I just have to make sure that I stay at least one to two floors above him. And whenever he shows an opening, I take it and that's another kill. So it's always about that constant pressure. Make sure after you get a snipe shot in, you go for it. I see so many people after they hit me with a snipe, they just, they just stay back. They think, oh, he's gonna peek again. But usually I'll just hide and then heal up and then I push them for the kill. Now at this point, the circle is really small, yet there's still Still eight people left so you can pretty much guess that there's gonna be people like everywhere so instead of just running around aimlessly in the open I'm gonna go ahead and go into the safe zone at the highest point so that I can look around like usual and that point is going to be right above the old dusty depot after I get there I didn't find anyone but someone actually did find me and tried to push up to me so we start getting into a build fight after I see them I make sure to double ramp so that they can't shoot me down and when I noticed that they stopped I also stopped because at this point they're gonna start shooting and I already have the high ground but I did build one extra ramp right in front of me this made it so that they shot it down because the newest ramp is the weakest one so I did a little trick on them I didn't go onto it I started aiming in at them behind the ramp so that when they shoot it down I get a lot of free shots in so now I have a huge advantage so I'm just gonna go and push really hard and another nice trick you can do is to build a floor right above them and then edit the wall so that you stroke you fall straight through it nobody expects you to fall through the wall so notice he's not even aiming at me as I fall down he was aiming at like in front of that where he thinks I would jump down so I got the free shot on him and that is another kill so now I'm just chilling at the high point because running around <laughs> dusty divot is not a good idea and then I get shot by a sniper like 200 meters away so the only thing I could really do here is camp in a one by one and since they had the high ground I didn't want to deal with them anymore so I built two more walls above me in their direction and now I'm pretty much good I can just ignore them and uh, look at the other areas of the map instead I find someone new Mr. Snipe shot because I suck with a sniper but luckily for me they have to run a lot in the open because they're running into the safe zone right now from the storm. So I get a lot of shots in and one of them finally connected. But it's really far away so I can't finish them off. But since I had a jump pad, I go ahead and use that to secure the kill. Normally if you're just playing to win, then this would be a bad idea. You would try and stick to your high ground, good, good positioning and not waste your jump pad. But I mean, I was at 12 kills so I'm going for high kill game right now. So I went in for it. Even though though it's not the best choice if you want to win. I get a pretty easy kill because they didn't build at all. Now I'm gonna go ahead and head back to my great position because it's still in the safe zone so I'm gonna build a lot around it. And notice how I'm double ramping up to it even though I don't have to since it's already built but I want to because I want the foundation to be really strong and not have it be shut down easily. Now I'm trying to finish the lawn off that's like 250 meters away. It doesn't work out because you know damage fall off and and everything like that but hey at least I got some good damage in 
Now someone else is gonna push me because I have literally the best position in the game. So of course I accept their challenge, I build up and we start the next build fight. I actually played this fight really carefully because the enemy was pretty good. I had the high ground and I'm trying to get some free shots in. But they knew how to block every single shot so I couldn't get it in. So I'm just trying to be very careful listening for sound. I go down like one level at a time to find the enemy. Because I know that they can't edit most of these structures. So they'll probably be around the open. And when I'm going down I hear them shooting. So this is the perfect time. Whenever the enemy is shooting it means that they're trying to break down the whole structure. So you want to get down as soon as possible and get a free shot in. So there you go I get that 100 damage spicy shot in and finish them off pretty easy. Now I got really unlucky with the last circle here because it went all the way to the other side and the enemy that I didn't keep track of earlier could be literally anywhere. They could be behind 10 of these trees, they could be behind all those structures. So I really couldn't do anything but run around and get shot. So I'm sorry to say but I lost this one. There, there was no way I could have won. The, the guy snipes me for over 100 and he destroys me. Wait a minute, oh my god, I actually won. <laughs> <laughs> I actually won somehow. Okay, let's go ahead and look, take a look at how I actually won here. So, I'm just running around with no clue where that enemy is. I get shot. I zoom in. The enemy takes cover. Very nice. So, I'm like, dang it, I've, I have to get cover. So, what do I do? I just shoot a random shot and then build a wall. And, and it actually hit him for a 109 damage. It wasn't gonna kill, but you guys know why it actually killed? Because of like 3 minutes earlier when I was shooting him from over 200 meters away. I managed to chip off like all of his shield. So he had zero shield at that time. And there you go, that's how you play every time if you're trying to get high kill wins. But it might be hard to do some of the things I mentioned in the video if you don't have a good pair of headphones. Mastrop actually sent me a pair of headphones called the Mastrop XAKG M220 Pro headphones. These headphones have been used in the pro audio industry for over 30 years. And they're guaranteed to let you hear sounds in game the way it was meant to be heard. So that you can spot enemies and hear them coming a lot easier in Fortnite. I'm actually going to be using these headphones from now on because they're better than my old ones. I can better tell the directions of the enemies and much more with these than my old one. Plus the cord is really long. and I can can wear these for a whole day without any problems. So go ahead and check out the link in the description to see if you like these headphones. They only cost $49.99 but if you haven't used Mastrop before then you also get a $10 discount on these headphones using that link. So make sure to check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.